we have a short pre-recorded message from DJ Wewa about her lived experience of disability and employment. DJ Wewa is not your ordinary DJ. Over to you, DJ. DJ Wewa is wearing an orange v-neck blouse and she's talking to you facing the camera. My name is DJ Wewa. Yeah, I'm 27 years. My disability is called the Children of Party. Yeah, I'm a DJ and I'm from Kenya. My name is DJ Wewa. I want to DJ Wewa. I want to DJ Wewa. Pan <laughs> Okay. She's wearing a red and white striped blouse and she's pinning the DJ deck using her feet. Okay. <laughs> She's wearing a red and white striped blouse and she's pinning the DJ deck using her feet. <laughs> Next session is uh, the employment. So we'll have an employment panel coming in. Thank you, everyone, and welcome. As we say in Swahili, Karibuni Kwa Kikao Hiki. Welcome to this panel, which is going to be focusing on employment, technology, and persons with disabilities. I am so honored and delighted to be able to moderate this session today which I will be bringing in an amazing and distinguished panelists of men. I um, we seem to have lost sound. Paul, could you introduce yourself? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, good morning. My name is Paul Kasimu. I'm the Chief Human Resources Officer at Safaricom. Male, black, in my 50s. Glad to be here. Thank you, Paul. Um, I think we've got some technical issues. Um, we're just waiting for um, Luke. Please, could you put your camera on? And, um, and join us on the panel. And uh, also to Yedna Bersh, please try and rejoin. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Luke Muleka. Uh, I'm male with beard wearing specs. Uh, currently, you can't see me because I'm having challenges with my video and um, the founder and managing director of uh, Science Media Kenya Limited, uh, a company that has uh, two products, Science TV and Assist, uh, a sign language uh, station 
TV station called Science TV and the sign language interpreters application called Assistol. Thank you, and I'm glad to be here. So um, the session on employment is um, uh, here to help us uh, discuss how, um, how we can take steps in Africa to close the disability employment gap. Um, and in particular, think about and discuss the role that technology has to play. Um, we have um, our panel members are here to share their different perspectives. Um, Paul, uh, as an employer from uh, Safaricom, and uh, Luke is also an employer, but <clears throat> from Science TV. Um, and his focus is on um, uh, really uh, the, the accommodations and reasonable adjustments that, um, that employers can and should be making for employees with disabilities. Um, we're still waiting for um, our final panel member to join. I think um, the internet gremlins are with us today. Um, but I'd, I'd like to start with a, um, a first question to Paul, if I may. Um, Paul, Safaricom has been at the fore of disability um, inclusion in Kenya um, through providing equal opportunities for employment of persons with disabilities. Based on Safaricom's experience in the economic empowerment of persons with disabilities through employment, what has been Safaricom's role and what are some of the challenges and successes um, that you've encountered? And also finally, what's your plan going forward? Over to you, Paul. Well, thank you and uh, looking forward to our colleagues joining us. I hope we'll all bear with one another Technology is always a problem, but uh, we shall overcome. At Safaricom, we believe that uh, the disability inclusion is part of business ethos. It's not just a nice to do, but a business imperative and a human rights issue. Now, we are guided by our purpose, which is to transform lives. And we also believe in what we call the three Ps. Purpose, people before profit. And in there, it's our belief that we should leave no one behind, whether it is potential employees or even our customers. So our commitment to diversity and inclusion is embedded in everything we do, including our strategy, our mission. And as we seek to become a technology company, we believe that inclusion should be at the forefront of that agenda. If I can uh, take us just a little bit of where, what we've done in the recent piece, in terms of our, in 2018, I think there was a moment when we attended the Global Disability Summit in London. And our delegation was a diverse team led by our then CEO. And we signed what we call the Disability Charter. And in there, we focus on three areas. So it has 10 items, but we picked three as Safaricom. The first of those is economic empowerment of people with disability, offering them decent work in line with the SDGs, uh, giving them meaningful work, but also ensuring that they can be reliable and they can rely on themselves. The second piece that we focused on was elimination of uh, stigma. And this runs from the family setting to the school, we had the education session that ran, so even uh, if you go to the work environment. So that stigma and discrimination, even to a point of saying, how do we make people with living with disability feeling they are human beings and they have a right to be here? And even stigma at a personal level. And the final one, the third item after the economic empowerment, after elimination of stigma, we said we wanted to champion and really focus on facilitating availability of affordable assistive design devices for persons with disability. So that was our, our commitment, which we have embraced in our strategy. We subsequently signed uh, uh, the Global Disability Network, joined the Global Disability Network 
uh, which is led by the International Labour Organization, ILO, and the Kenya Business Disability Network, which is driven by FKE. And we also signed to the 10 principles of that disability charter and ensuring that we have real inclusion in the workplace. We, are, we believe also in the constitutional uh, dispensation and the requirement that organizations should seek to have a mirror in reflection of people with disability, just like the communities in which we operate. So the target is 5% of people living uh, with disability to be employed. It's in line with our purpose, it's in line with our employee value proposition, and also as an equal opportunity employer. That's a journey for Safaricom. We are currently at 2.4% of our workforce. Uh, we are currently about 6,000 employees. So just around 150 of our employees have, are people living with one disability or another. Now, in that piece, and when we look at the challenges that we've had to deal with, I think the piece about what drives our ambition is the challenges that we've seen we want to go beyond tokenism and beyond just targets to truly living a real diverse and inclusive and our workplace where everybody can be themselves and they can bring their best in it. I think the challenges we've had as we picked the three priority areas of economic empowerment, the area of um, uh, facilitating or removing elimination of stigma, and then assistive devices, is the bigger challenge we have is lack of analytics or information data to show us what is the scope of the problem in Kenya. And this is one of the things we've had to ask um, the government, uh, uh, local government, public, I mean, the county government, private sector. We do not seem to have real insights in terms of how big is the problem? What is the nature and extent of uh, um, disability across the country? How can it be assisted? And I think for us, that's one of the real challenges we've had to struggle with. The second link to that is about the policy. Uh, I mean, uh, we have said 5%, and I think one of the things we've also had in terms of our forum uh, is to ask, how can the government look at incentives to organizations and to um, individuals so that we can create a real environment where organizations can A, provide uh, meaningful jobs to people with disability, but also the assistive devices are affordable because that's the other thing that they are expensive. So out of that, I think what we've done is looking at our identity and vision, what, where we've, uh, our story of the why, the what of inclusion, and also ensuring that what gets measured gets done. And for us is where we've had to look at how we facilitate the whole of Safaricom to truly embrace diversity and inclusion and to have a real culture of inclusion where everybody can be. That's around mindsets, how we work on uh, how we drive our mindsets, right from uh, leadership to team members. It's about skill sets. How do we ensure that we upgrade, upskill our people, those with disabilities, those living with disability to be truly a future fit, and also tooling them as, as one of the bits that we are working on. Allow me to talk about some of the technology, uh, relevant technology that we've done to make it easier for us to accommodate employees with disability. I think the first thing is about the digital recruitment platforms. And that's one problem we have in Kenya that the platforms that exist are for people without disability. And therefore, like uh, what we call the higher view, how do you make it convenient for people, for instance, who are visually impaired to access or to see the opportunities that exist out there? We also look at, as I said, inclusive workplaces. We've had the larger screens. We've uh, what we call the job access with speech for visually impaired. We have also looked at the platforms, like the social enterprise platforms that whenever we have a, an event, we also have the auto queue and we take care of our deaf and also those who are visually uh, uh, challenged. I think the bit of relevant uh, devices to enable our people to thrive. We've looked at our workstations. That was one of the things we wanted to make sure that the workstations are customized. 
We also went ahead and looked at our comprehensive medical cover because some of the medical covers exclude certain forms of disability. And we ensure that uh, we provided a cover that would provide for wheelchairs, prosthetics, crutches, the eye care, physiotherapy. And that has been a journey which we continue to work on. I think for us, we also went beyond just workplace. We also looked at our products and services and we introduced what we call uh, the, in, um, the interactive voice recognition solution for our customers in 2018. And this is for people who are visually impaired, blind customers uh, to be in control of their MPESA transactions. W w that was a big one because you'll find uh, some of the visually impaired will be defrauded by guardians. And we thought that was a, a big one to be given. The final one for me is about the Zuri chatbot, where we also looked at the access to uh, the deaf, where people can now, it break the, the barrier of access. And therefore, as we go along, we are looking at how we can provide more devices to our people. Partnerships is a big one. As I said, we have uh, several partnerships that we have, but the bigger challenge that we want to do is work on our culture to make Safaricom really an equal opportunity employer to be the best, to allow people to be the best versions of themselves. Thank you, I'll pause there. Um, thank you, Paul. This was very inspiring and thank you for also filling the gap while I was absent. Uh, I would like now uh, want to uh, invite Luke to take us into the next presentation uh, on the sign TV station and uh, on uh, how uh, we can um, uh, remove barriers in workplaces. How can we provide support services and reasonable accommodations for employers? I was happy to hear Paul talking about, uh, uh, you know, barriers, uh, you know, making sure that ac access to persons with disabilities, uh, access to services is ensured. In your case, how do you ensure services for persons without disability? You bring a very interesting paradigm. And so can you tell us a little bit about the reasonable accommodation, the support service that you provide in the workspace also in the sign TV station? Over to you, Luke. Uh, thank you very much, Yatna Beish. And I'm very glad to be part and parcel of um, uh, this discussion. Uh, one of the things that I want to dwell on is, um, um, of course, uh, accessive te uh, assistive technology and also assistive services. But I want to draw back a little bit and um, uh, just touch on uh, what we talk about if we are talking about barriers, because while we have this assistive uh, services and technology is all about barriers, and we are looking at barriers, we have, uh, in my own understanding, and what I've uh, conceptualized as Science Media Kenya Limited, is that uh, we'll have uh, four types of barriers. One is attitudinal barrier. Uh, the other one would be legal and another one structural and then of course the uh, uh, technological. Let me go to attitudinal barriers and this basically goes to what is the software that actually encompasses the organization culture and what actually Paul has uh, alluded to is very important that people have to first of all have the right attitude to one to work with persons with disabilities and also persons with disabilities to have that uh, uh, I mean um, uh, that culture to be absorbed in the culture to be able to work well and that goes a lot of I mean uh, gets the organization to go an extra mile and try and inculcate this culture into the existing staff and through the whole organization, right from the board level, the management level, from the shareholders perspective for them to understand the importance of uh, 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 having a right attitude towards persons with disabilities. Because remember, most organizations are structured under the value proposition on return on investment, and the, the shareholder is always looking at that return on investment in everything we are doing as organizations. So if the attitude, attitude is right, the persons with disabilities will get it right, I mean, to be uh, absorbed in the institutions. In Kenya, what I'm looking at is that we've had legal framework that guides us. One, uh, the CRPD, uh, the Constitution of Kenya, that uh, whereby uh, Article 54 is very clear about discrimination of, uh, irrespective of disability. And this goes a long way, whereby uh, 
uh, we that um, we also have uh, I mean uh, the Disability Act, and it's specific to allow the organisations to be able to interact because now the environment, the legal uh, environment, is actually uh, good. Then when we talk to the organisations, uh, I mean uh, go to the organisations like what. Um, for example, and this uh, conversation I've had with uh, uh, some members that at SciSTI, for example, we have made the structure adjustment to be uh, accommodative to persons with disability. This goes all the way from how the, uh, the building is structured. We don't have lifts, but I've gone, uh, we find that like, uh, uh, lifts should be in a manner that someone should be able to access themselves. It's a visual impaired persons. They should be able to, uh, to press buttons without necessarily asking. So that means that the buttons of the lifts should be um, should have uh, some form of uh, uh, braille. Uh, there is now the aspect of technological uh, uh, mean uh, uh, barriers that people with disability experience. And you've seen uh, what uh, uh, Paul has just said. And when we come to Science TV, uh, for example, we've made sure that from the moment you come into the person with disability and we do this based on the spectrum of disability from purposes from interviews when we are doing these interviews we want to know um as a person with disability which is the best uh, form of support that we require now uh, for example if it's a, a, a person with the um a deaf person of course will require uh, the aspect of um, a sign language interpretation, which is an assistive service to help them access and make their jobs uh, uh, easier. That means that at Science TV, we have full-time sign language interpretation services availed. And when we come to visually impaired persons, of course, uh, one of the things is that they use technology a lot to be able to, uh, to, be able to perform their duties because one of uh, the things we've done is that at Science TV, we have 34 employees, and out of these 34 employees, 19 of them are persons with disabilities. So we are looking at slightly above 50 percent, uh, headed to 60 percent of our employees are persons with disabilities, and they are not just one specific disability. We have a range of disability from a short stature, uh, persons uh, I mean with albinism. We have also uh visually impaired persons we have the deaf and we have physical people on the physical spectrum so we give accommodation to spectrum and this goes to how are you going to uh to make your environment as an employer to be accommodative to persons with disability so that means that you have to look at the technology that exists in organization and also uh, uh the services that are required I will just go to I mean touch briefly on um, when you are looking at people, for example, dyslectic persons, and you are doing interviews to them. How do you? Because uh, what I've seen is in the most uh, uh, corporates that we have, when we are going to do interviews, we have a panel of fifteen people that are actually going to ask you question, and that in a way also uh, gets to a point where by dyslectic persons gets affect get affected by that type of paneling. So one of the things we want to look at is. That as a person with disability, you're joining Science TV. What first of all, we have to uh, work with you in a manner that you are telling us what assistive technology and assistive services will re you will require to be able to perform your jobs better. And that is one of the things that I would say that if we go through uh, the attitudinal uh, support, uh, legal structure, and technology, we're able to support persons with disabilities better. I'll leave it at that and probably pick up later as we proceed. Thank you, Luke. Definitely, we will come back to the uh, fantastic points you raised. Uh, I, I think we will be using the word persons with dyslexia throughout this panel, as I always say that in such panels, we learn among each, each, each of us. So I have seen a lot of acronymation, abbreviation of uh, persons with disabilities also. I don't think it takes ages to call us persons with disabilities. So please, I uh, call on uh, using uh, persons with disabilities instead of PWDs in this uh, whole panel. I'm now going to, um, uh, I am seeing a lot of questions going on. Thank you everyone for your active participation. May I ask uh, distinguished panelists to answer some of them in the chat? Otherwise we will take to pick some of them after uh, Nit Shah Shahavhani has already spoke to us. Niti Shahavani, I really apologize if I am mispronouncing your name, but I, I would like to warmly welcome you. And I would like you to focus on how we can bridge the gap between education 
and employment as learning should lead us into earning and what should be the role of technology in bridging this gap? Over to you. Nita Shavhani. I'm not listening. Yeah, please. Yes. Nit Shivhani. Can someone from the organizers confirm that uh, Nit Shivhani has access to mic and camera, yes. please? Yeah, access Thank you. to mic. Please unmute. Unmute yourself. I can't unmute. Yeah, no, no, you are you are unmuted already. You can go ahead. Oh, I hear you. Sorry. Perfect. Thank you so much. I, yeah, I'm not sure about your camera, but I can confirm you are unmuted. Please go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, and and apologies for the frustrations we're going through in terms of the network. Uh, these are the challenges that we have to face. The education is an important undertaking for persons with disabilities because their lives hinge solely on it for survival. It is no miracle that in Africa, this is exactly what we have to ensure that we strengthen our, our, ourselves on. Unfortunately, the gap that exists between them and, the, and accessing information compared to their peers at institutions of higher learning is evident and continues to pose challenges for their academic success. Some scholars have noted that while in the United States, uh, one computer is shared by only two people, in Africa, one computer is shared by almost 6,000 people. Whilst academic, uh, uh, academics acknowledge the computer gap uh, that makes persons with disabilities to be relatively functional uh, with greater in, uh, independence, there is a lot of barriers on the use of technology, particularly in Africa. It is submitted by scholars that it is important with institutions, our governments, and financial sectors to collaborate in order to close the existing gaps on what they call digital divide. The main global concern is the gap between those with access and those without access to technological devices. So it is a problem when it comes to school access, uh, particularly on higher education, because these are the gaps that always manifest themselves. And for them to be able to be addressed, collaboration, as I said earlier, is very important. And on inclusive employment, it is this point that it is important that we probe what inclusive employment actually means. Inclusive employment, according to the point, it indicates that it refers to all activities which enable an individual to gain access to decent remunerated work. The activities undertaken and uh, mechanisms used by handicap internationals inclusive employment sector aim to promote employment in decent remunerated work environment. And for people with disabilities, and this is also important. The policy provides several uh, fundamentals which are important for ensuring that employment becomes inclusive and also includes the aspect of reasonable accommodation. 
opportunity to work, which is everyone who intends to work must be able to find sustainable employment. Volunteering in the workplace, which is an individual must be able to freely choose their employment. Productive work, which is remuneration must be adequate for all. Fairness at work, that is persons must not be discriminated against during and pre-employment. Uh, Safety at work, there must be social protection at work and dignity at work, which is workers must be treated with respect and collegiality. I am going to speak to what reasonable accommodation is at our workplace. It is notable that reasonable accommodation goes to an extent of providing individual-based access uh, to an environment. And that should be designed in a manner that accommodates individual with their personal or respective needs. It means an appropriate modifications or adjustment that doesn't impose a disproportionate or undue burden on the employer. In other words, it must strike a balance between the employee's needs and the employer's affordability and ability to match the, uh, the accommodation, reasonable accommodation and adaptations related to that. So it is important, colleagues, that it must be tailor-made for an individual and according to their specific uh, uh, impairments. And they must be able to advise the employer of what, as individuals, they would want in order for them to perform well at work. Colleagues, in the nutshell, under these frustrating circumstances, I think uh, I'll go this way and uh, I'll wait for questions and, and answers. I mean, for questions to be answered. Thank you so much, uh, Anitsha Vahani. And uh, this was very important to note about reasonable accommodation. Um, I think it's important also that we underline the fact that reasonable accommodation should be requested. Can I ask uh, those of you who are not speaking to mute your microphone, please? Nitisha Vahani, can I ask you to mute again your microphone? Thank you so much for doing that. I have a couple of questions uh, coming from our uh, distinguished participants. Paul, I would like to start a bit with you. Um, the first question, uh, of course, asks, uh, how do you involve persons with disabilities when you uh, work on products and services for them for, uh, in line with nothing about us without us principle? Are they really engaged? Because sometimes technologies are developed without consulting them and finally it becomes a challenge. And another question again for you is that, um, how, what, what incentives does the government provide to encourage employers uh, hire uh, persons with disabilities? And how can we ensure the employment of underrepresented groups like persons with intellectual disabilities, persons who are deaf blind? So uh, how do we really also ensure that they are represented in the workforce? Maybe we'll start with this one and I will go for the other questions for Luke. Over to you, Paul. Oh, thank you very much. Great questions. And I'll say, let me start with the one of uh, what we are doing at Safaricom. Uh, in 2018, we, did, uh, we introduced the interactive voice recognition, which was for people who have uh, visual challenges. Now, there's a question specifically for the deaf. And what we've done is uh, introduced a chat bot, which is called Zuri. And Zuri is going to help at the palm of your hand using your phone to interact and to engage and access our products as on the go, as it were. I think the opportunity, there, there is more that can be done. 
and where therefore what we are now uh, driving through what I said is a global disability summit forum is we've been we have we have five about five areas that we are focusing on. The first is on employment of people with disability. And we've looked at how do we provide a, a forum uh, where people can actually, anybody, irrespective of their disability, can access potential job opportunities. We did the, uh, we worked with the National, um, National Council for Persons with Disability to utilize their career portal where we can have now a central access of people with disability in Kenya, which is a wider pool of people with talent. And I think that's a big one that we are saying, we're encouraging people to, uh, to uh, post their CVs and then we can go around and, uh, and access. We're also going to institutions that train people with disability and actively, proactively engaging with them and seeing how we can also engage them at the platform. Now, the Forum for Global Disability meets quarterly. And when we meet, I said one was at employment, the other one was entrepreneurship. So beyond formal employment, we are also recognizing we can give people with disability opportunity or skills to become uh, more uh, economically utilized. So that would be another bit. The third area that we work on is the one on ensuring that the policy is right. And we have national government, legislative council uh, uh, representatives coming in to look at how are we dealing with policies that can help our people uh, access some of the, or overcome some of the barriers that exist in the, in, in the organizations that we are operating. The fourth one is about uh, uh, academia. And we're also saying we need, we need to have some research around this area of ensuring that we get more insights to drive decisions going forward. And the final one where Luke uh, leads is the one on advocacy and bringing it to the fore for every other organization to know what is happening. Now at, at Safaricom, what we've also said is exactly the question that has been raised to ensure that the people who are developing products for our customers are also people who live with one form of disability or the other, because we believe in being with us for us and developing products that we are not designing for people who are not with us. So you will come and find people with disability very closely involved with the, with the product um, innovation as we move forward. I think the piece about the government incentives is one area we have said it could be better. We are not seeing that coming through in terms of tax rebates, in terms of uh, recognizing some of the works that people, uh, organizations have done. But with the Federation of Kenya Employers, we've said we now need to partner and include government in our discussions. As opposed to talking to the government, we want to co-create and create something that works for uh, people with disability in Kenya. I think for us, what we believe is how we join hands, all different players to address the issues jointly, rather than people standing from one point to another and throwing barbs at each other. I'll pause there and, uh, and, and say, happy to take any other question that comes through. Thank you, Asante <laughs> Sana, Paul. Uh, I will now go to Luke, and Luke, I would like you to respond uh, also to the question, since you have said you have different types of disabilities, can you uh, also share with us if there are people with intellectual disabilities or people who are deaf blind, uh, and also what kind of barriers, uh, re barrier removal measures you put to include those underrepresented group. It was also being said that um, what could be the role of organizations of persons with disabilities? Maybe Nita Shivahani, you can also pick that later. But how can we ensure that employers get the assistance they need or the support they need in order to employ persons with disabilities? And maybe you can also comment on the incentive from the government. I know, like, for example, in Kenya, there is some incentive uh, for entrepreneurs with disabilities, maybe something that you can tell us about. Over to you, Luke. Uh, thank you very much, Yetnabesh, uh, and uh, this is a very good uh, uh, opportunity just to share these experiences that so far in my uh, organization, that is Science Media, where we, uh, and especially uh, our um, lead project, which is Science TV, we've not had a chance to, um, to get a talented person or come 
come come come in front and um, would like to be part of the team that uh, actually does programming on science tv and we will be ready uh, to welcome uh, uh, people with um, a mental disability and also deaf blind to come and uh, as paul has said that it's all about um, co-creating together because what we do is we don't have a fix it all uh, that you come and fit in, but you come as a person with disability. Of course, uh, uh, the most the most driver that we use is uh, your talent. Then from there, we are able to uh, to structure your needs uh, with the company so that we make sure that we actually support you. And this goes all the way to uh, uh, assistive services and also assistive technology. So currently, we don't have this. Um, I mean, the people uh, uh, with the mental disability in our employment, and also the deaf blind in our employment. But actually, uh, we would like to have any that are talented. They would like to take on the issue. Uh, I mean, on science media and science TV to come and work with us, and we see how we support them, so that we co create. And as you, it's always said nothing for us uh, without us we'd like you to uh, let's learn the challenges that are involved so that we can co-create together thank you Nabesh. you maybe look I will, I'll, I'll keep you a bit longer and ask you uh, you you said you have uh, employees with uh, uh, visual impairment can you tell us about what mechanisms you put in place to make them work comfortably that was a question from one of our participants uh, very good. Um, what, 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 one of the th items that we've uh, uh, deployed is uh, the orbit reader that uh, helps them to be able to uh, like uh, broadcast news. But uh, we, for those who are not uh, very comfortable uh, with the um, uh, with the converting uh, some, uh, I mean, uh, converting uh, written as as uh, written uh, text into braille. But one of the things, some of them are very comfortable. For example, our um, our uh, today's, I mean, every Wednesday we have uh, a new uh, a news anchor for seven o'clock news. Who does it using the braille? As what happens is they have an a person who prepares news and will enable him to convert this to his most comfortable way of doing it, which pro means we provide for him uh, uh, the braille paper and he use the, the stylus and the and the slit to be able to convert this to a, 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 I mean, a format that he's able to read this news. So what happens is, again, as I say, we co-create. Uh, for example, he was, he, he, he didn't, um, I mean, uh, he feels that he's more comfortable when he converts uh, the written, I mean, the text into braille. And he does it pretty fast. Whatever people have been preparing the whole day, he normally does it within uh, 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 within 30 minutes. And to me, that is amazing. So what happens is we provide a situation, a free environment in which we'll support you with whatever you want. But if you really want to maintain, like he maintained, he wants to maintain uh, Braille uh, papers and uh, sket and stylus, we also encourage that. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. That was interesting. Maybe we, need, we really need to look uh, farther and deeper, maybe from this uh, Inclusive Africa conference, what can really replace the slate and stylus. I, I used to be a slate and stylus user, which is time consuming and also which is not technology friendly. So I, I would advise uh, considering other technologies like Bra Braille Focus and also a Braille Sense and others to really replace this. I would like now to go to Nita Shavahani. Uh, I would like you to reflect on two things. What should be the role of organizations of persons with disabilities uh, in really uh, uh, promoting disability inclusive employment? That's number one, you know, what, what role should DPOs play in this uh, 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 important sector, which is not only earning, but also even gaining your dignity. Secondly, how, from your experience, how can we change the mindset of employers in Africa for them to hire persons with disabilities? Maybe this is something I would like also Paul to reflect on. How can we really convince? Because if an employer is not convinced, he is not gonna hire a person with a disability. So how can we change? the mindset of employers. Maybe I would like to reflect on this too, as quickly before we wind up. Nita Shavahani. Uh, yeah, Nifresh, we, we yes. lost Shavani for a moment there. So perhaps Paul could answer the question. Yes, thank you. Uh, Paul and uh, Luke, uh, yeah, maybe Paul, you start. And may I ask you also one sharp question, Paul? I saw also from the Safaricom website that you had a target of reaching 5% of your employees become persons with disabilities. 
in March 2021. Where does that target stand in case if I have missed it from your previous presentation? Over to you, Paul. And maybe these two questions, how can we uh, reach the mindset of employers to hire persons with disabilities? And what can organizations of persons with disabilities do to support employers employ more diverse workforce? Over to you, Paul. No, great. Let me take the last one first, the one on uh, where are we on the journey? We are currently at 2.4%. So about 150 of our people are living with disability, one form of disability or the other. We don't think it's anything to celebrate. And also what you're saying is it's not just the number, it's how do we work with them and grow them in the organization. In terms of how we then to bring faster, convince employers, I think if you are led by purpose, you'll find everything else comes in place. And what we've found in our case, when purpose is at the front of everything, if you have people living with disability in your employment, you increase diversity. The thinking changes. Lucas said, nothing for us without us. That's what we've also discovered in terms of the products we are developing. People with disability are coming out with much better insights than when we are thinking for them. I think for us, we found that if you get a diverse workforce, your productivity goes up. The biggest problem uh, with most organizations is to look at disability as a cost rather than as an opportunity to really grow the diversity of your, your workforce and have a representative workforce that goes across the entire uh, divide. In terms of disability organizations, I think give us more insights. Share with us some of the things we can do more to bring most of the people with disability to the front and articulate the, the issues that we have. In Kenya, the Forum for Global Disability has helped us a lot because what we found is we have 40 organizations, public, private sector, disability organizations, university, which are coming together and then saying, who is going to lead on this? So we are not speaking at each other, we are talking together. And that concept of co-creation is something I would say for most of the countries that have not done it, please create that forum where we can all be together and create this common target that we have ahead of us. Thank you once again. Thank you so much, Paul. Luke, I can give you one minute and a half if you want to do any concluding thing. Otherwise, we really need to wrap up this session to allow other very interesting sessions to come on board. Luke? Uh, what I would say, Yetna Beshi, is that uh, for a very long time, organizations have been building what we call metal ramps. It's the first time as we conclude this conference, probably for people to start thinking about building mental ramps so that uh, we have inclusive designs and also inclusive thinking. Because at the organization level, if the board or the uh, annual general meetings are in themselves inclusive, then it will mean that the products that the organizations are designing become inclusive. That means the policies and uh, the company, uh, what we call, um, strategic plans become inclusive. The budgets will be allocated to make sure that the organization is inclusive. Employment will be inclusive. Communication will be inclusive. So uh, if we just go to the issue of how do we make uh, uh, employers or organizations start think, I mean, to include persons with disabilities, it goes up there in even if it's a public a listed company to have its annual general meeting having a sign language interpreter that alone changes the mindset of the shareholders to know that there is some of our customers whom we are looking at who are deaf people whom we are not actually been probably communicating to probably employing probably doing so you realize that it goes up to that level so i leave it at this point that let us start building mental ramps because we've built metal ramps for so long Wow, that was so powerful. Thank you so much, Luke. Thank you so much, Paul. I'm really sorry that we couldn't keep Nita Shavahani on, on, online. I think I, I would like to leave you with the message that technology is a real enabler. We, we have got him back. Nita Shavahani, are you there? Okay. Yes. You yeah. went. I, I can, can, I, can give I just... you one minute. One minute. Sorry, I, I, you, I was trying That's... to stress you. Please, one minute. Go ahead. That's fine. 
Um, what I would want to address, Felix, uh, is on the accessibility in terms of how to use the technology for us for 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 uh, persons with disabilities to be effective at the working environment because that is very important. Access should not only be that you can get the gadget that you want to use, but it must be that the uh, employer must be able to empower you through the uh, usage of that technology so that you can be effective. So training and uh, 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 other related uh, measures that could be ensured that uh, people are empowered, they, sh they should be put in place at work. Thank you very much. I fully agree with you. Skills are really important. Gadgets by themselves, gadgets are important, but they're not sufficient. So it's important to provide training, reskilling our persons with disabilities. In particular, as Africa is a home to the majority of young persons with disabilities, it's critically important that we equip our youth population with the skills with the technological skills that they need to function uh, properly. At this juncture, I would like to thank all Paul from Safaricom, Luke from Sign TV, and Nita Shavahani from the African Disability Alliance for joining us on this dialogue on inclusive employment. I am sure it's going to be a topic which will be attracting more uh, dialogue. So I would encourage you to bring it up throughout the conference. And may I ask again, those of you who are not speaking to mute your microphones, I would like to thank you all for your active participation. And I would like to pause here and hand over back to the organizers to lead us into the next session. Over.